gives an idea about exponential growth of data and the type of the data is both structured and unstructured. Okay? So, we will be looking at what is structured data and what is unstructured data. So, for typing, so this is this is how we can express or this is how we can define big data. So, big data is a term that deals with massive or large amount of data where the amount of data is growing in an exponential order. And the type of data is no longer structured. The type could be anything. It could be structured, unstructured. We will be looking at possible examples for structured and unstructured. The second way the, or other way of defining big data is Yes, of course, the size of the data is so huge and the rate at which it changes is also in exponential order. It is not kind of linear order, it is an exponential order. And the critical thing that we should consider is how to process those data because the data size is so huge and the growth is, is an exponential order. Okay? So, Processing of the data means, first of all, we should have some relational database management system to store, to process, to get results from the data. So this is what we have been using for so many years. Maybe for the past 30 to 40 years, we have been using RDBMS concept to store and process data. But there are certain limitations, certain limitations inherent with the RDBMS systems. It cannot process large amount of data. It can process, but the amount it take, the amount of time it takes to process and give you the result is so huge. Okay. So these are the reasons. The particular amount of data. Data is always data, right? Whether it is one one gigabyte or one terabyte or one petabyte, data is always going to be the data. But in what sense we start call them as big data is a question. Okay. So to answer the question, I would say that. Whenever with existing mechanism, whenever with existing technology, capability or system, if you are unable to process the large amount of data, the large could be anything. It could be gigabytes, petabytes, terabytes, whatever it is. We have got some system or some configuration. With that configuration, with that system, if we are unable to process the data, the given data, then we can say you are in big data problem. There are many ways you can define big data, but here in this context, I would say big data is a problem because you have got data, but you are unable to do anything with that. If you are going to process the data, if it is going to take one day, one long day, would you be interested? You cannot just throw away the data. Data is your asset. But what should we do? We should find some alternate mechanisms so as to process the data. But the, the only terminology we are familiar with is RDBMS. Okay? So using RDBMS technology, we are unable to process that volume of data. So we are in need of to find some alternatives. So that is what is the big data and big data related solutions. So these are some other standard definition. So, big data exceeds the reach of commonly used hardware and software tools. Okay, we have got some set of tools. What power will be used those tools to capture, to manage, to process? Okay. So, with the existing tools, if you are unable to, you can, in some sense, the unable means you can apply those tools, but the amount of time it takes is so huge. Okay. So if these are the limitations, then we can say the data is big data. The size of the data is so huge and we are big data problem. And of course, if the amount of data that we have with us is beyond the abilities of the traditional technologies, then we can call, it, call them as big data. So whatever we have been discussing so far, to put them in a pictorial manner, I would say, both on X and Y axis, okay? The box that is highlighted in red color, so that is the limitations, that, that, that is the processing abilities. But 
the size of the data and the response time, input output per second. Okay, using your existing capabilities, both in x-axis and y-axis, if it is going to exceed or if it surpasses the normal or uh, traditional systems capabilities, then we'll call them, we'll call that particular data as big data. So so far, so far what we have seen is some uh, you know uh, normal, I mean the traditional way of defining what is big data. So we, we always have data with us. We used to store and process them using RDBMS, but at one some point day, when the amount of data that I have with me is accumulated, so accumulated to to uh, to some volume, I come to know that using traditional RDBMS is not possible. Okay, now I will say that I have a big data problem. Okay, so this is what uh, this is how we have defined big data. Then the next question is, okay, fine. So data is always data. So far, I don't, I don't have any problem. Okay, for the years I have been using RDBMS. So far, I did not have any problem, but today I got into some problem. How did that happen? So why is big data problem? Okay, I'll explain those concepts under this headings. IT evolution. Okay. Compare now we will live in the year 2015. Is there anybody here who did not have a mobile phone? Okay. So what was the case? Take for example some 10 years back. It is very hard to find the guys with a cell phone. But even today school going kids are we cannot find nobody without a hand or without a cell phone. Even school going kids they all have the hand, uh, you know, mobile phones. So what that means is. So they, the number of devices, the revolution, here IT revolution is like network, bandwidth, everything. Okay? Take for example, uh, internet penetration. Some five or ten years back, to, to have a broadband connection in our, uh, in, in, in even urban area, is not uh, the case. But today, everybody is having a, a, a handset with 2G, 3G, Connection. So that is the kind of IT evolution. So what is the impact of this particular IT evolution? So everything is digitized, everything is resulting in amount of data. Take for example, today people are going for other enrollment. How many of you have other care? So what is the significance of other? Unique identity of a person from the government perspective. So, as a citizen, what do you would take? So, Indian is the. Okay. To, to say that you are Indian, Indian, Indian citizen. But, behind the screen, nowadays you are seeing that all the schemes are linked, are, are getting linked, are going to be linked with ADA. In, in future, so without ADA, we will, we will be in a position to do nothing. So we cannot do anything without ADA. Today, we are supposed to link your ADA for LPG, your PDS, your the government is uh, offering so many free schemes, old age pension. In fact, CDAC like is uh, doing this ADA linking access for government of Tamil Nadu. So when we meet uh, the government officials, bureaucrats, they are very clear that in future without ADA, nobody would be in a position to receive any uh, benefit from the government. Okay. But, when we go for meetings, one striking point, what they told is to store, because what is basically ADA, as far as you as an end user is concerned, you will be just given a card with your name, address, some QR code. QR code or barcode will be there. That's it. But for the government, they have taken your photograph, they have captured your biometric, they have captured your iris. Okay? So these are all the digital information as far as the government is concerned. So what do you think? They'll just collect it from you and they'll just store it in some system and they'll do nothing with that. Do you think so? No. They are running data centers across the country. All your information is stored. Okay? And to store these three information, your basic information, your uh, demographic, like where you live, the locality information, 
then comes your biometric. Biometric is your thumb impression and your eye is put together. It takes around some 10 to 20 MB of MB per citizen. You just imagine the amount of uh, uh, data it is going to be if India is fully going to be honor enabled. We are of 100 crore plus. How much size, how much, uh, uh, how much is the requirement for uh, data storage? And you, we all will not accept that. At the end of the day, what the government will get, say for example, I am able to store all 100, 100 crore plus citizens data in a data center. Okay, so what, what's next? As long as I simply store them, what is the purpose of storing the data? Okay, so in the last interaction, the last interaction to big data, what I told is, using the traditional or using the existing mechanism, if you are going to process the data, if it is going to take time, then I am in big data issue. So this is an example, Aadhaar is a typical example for big data. The government is going to stay as a store, say for example in Tamil Nadu we are on some 7 crore people. If Tamil Nadu, government of Tamil Nadu is storing 7 crore people's data in a data center, without doing nothing, there is no use, right? There is one case. But to process those 7 crore or 6 crore people's data, it is going to take one long month. Say for example, I want to know from this particular region, how many of them did not get Aadhaar? Okay. Those are got Aadhaar. How many of them are getting this whole expansion? How many of, you are, of them are getting LPG subsidy? If the government is interested so that they can plan, they can allocate budget well in the next financial year. How is that possible without processing the data? For to process those six crore uh, records, for example, for the state, the state of Tamil Nadu alone, if it is going to take one week or one month, is that optimal situation? So these examples, I am saying you that and the potential of uh, data and the limitation of the existing mechanism. So now we are in need of finding out some alternatives. Any idea about the technologies behind our? You all know that Aadhaar is a you know, way away for identity citizens uniquely. So what are the technologies behind Aadhaar? You try to spend some time so that you would come to know what are the technologies behind how Aadhaar is enabled. Okay? Whether do they use traditional RTBMS or any big data related tools are being used now. And I would say the IT evolution today even panchayat level, even the, the very, very unit level uh, government office is enabled with computers. It is not the case of 5 or 10 years back. Only the, the collectorates, the district level offices are enabled with uh, IT systems. Take for example today, you just go by uh, MTC buses. Is, uh, today people are what, using uh, paper, paper based tickets or uh, this gadget based ticketing system? Gadgets. Gadgets. So at the end of the day, what, what they will do, they will just go back to the depot connected with the computer, everything is getting calculated automatically. How much they have earned for the day, how much they have earned for this particular route. Everything is within a fraction of time. Okay? Otherwise, what was happening earlier, some five or six years back, they used to record everything on a paper, they have to compute, there may be compute, you know, uh, chances of error. Okay? So now, constantly, we are after uh, process automation, that is what is called as process automation. Just go for any supermarket, everything is computerized, okay? The amount of, the, the more we computerize our environment surrounding us, more is the amount of data that is getting produced, okay? Here we should know, we are, we just simply say that big data, but back from that big data has come, who has generated the big data? One use case is Aadhaar. Anyway, Aadhaar government generated data. But what about, say, for example, your supermarket, your petrol pump, you are going bus, uh, by bus, you are uh, buying something from online. This was not the case of five or six years back. But recently, because of the IT, because of the bandwidth, we used to do everything using our mobile devices, using the internet. Okay? So, when the number of systems they are interconnected, when the number of applications to handle or to provide a process automation, so is the amount of, so is the increase in the 
more now data. So that is, these are all the factors that has influenced or that has resulted in large amount of data. And today, almost you could see everywhere you go, everything is kind of software enabled application. Take for example your college. Whenever a new student joins, there is a software application to register it. You just go for library. Everything is digitized. There is a software. Okay. Here, big data indicates the digital data. If you just visit any uh, government office, there is a room called file room. Okay. There are full of shelves with uh, you know lot of papers. Some 50 or 60 year old paper. So they will not just trash it out, but they will keep on storing it for some years. They are not treated as data because here in big, when we say big data, in principle we say that digital data. Okay, apart from digital data, if uh, there are so many uh, uh, means by which the data is represented, documents, papers, okay, but they are not considered as big data. Here, digital data is possible because of this IT system and revolution. So the challenges related with this big data is, I say that as long as I computerize, as long as I automate the process, so is the increase in the amount of the data. The first question is, so how to store the data? If I say that all uh, 100 crore plus people, I'm going to provide unique identification. How to store 100 crore plus citizens data? Okay? What should be the size of our system? Because, say for example, so far we have been uh, dealing with single computer with 1 terabyte or 2 terabyte hard disk. Okay? As far as our users are concerned, 1 TB is much more enough. We will format in for C, D, E, F, C equal operating system, D equal files, E equal songs, movies, something like that. We would say that, have we predicted this is what is going to be our uh, system requirement? We will do in this way. But how much should be the size of other project, take for example. Okay, you can just like the predict because today I have captured uh, these many parameters biometric. Yeah, I would say that that takes uh, to some uh, 20 MB, but tomorrow some there may be some additional requirements. You cannot design a single system to hold all 100 plus 100 core plus citizens data. Obviously, it is going to be multi system environment or data center. Okay, so but how to systematically store the data is the first challenge. So the next challenge is, obviously it is going to be a distributed environment. So how to manage the data? Here manage comprises of so many meanings. Okay, simply storing doesn't give you any value. Okay, obviously we will be storing across multiple systems. Okay, how to position those multiple systems? Say for example, if one machine goes down, one machine is out of order. What should, what will happen to my data? So how to address that situation? Okay, I have, I have managed to store the data in a systematic manner so that if one machine goes down, still I am in a position to retrieve it back. But how to process the data? So you are able to differentiate between storing the data and processing the data. Okay, unless you, you are able to process the data, there is no use. That is what I just told. Okay, having stored 100 crore plus citizens data in a, in, a, in a large database, in a large data center, if you are unable to process the data, to get some meaningful insight from the data, it is waste of resources. So these are the challenges. So how to store data, how to manage the data. So the next buzzing, uh, the evolving uh, term is IoT. Have you all heard IoT? Internet of Things. What is Internet of Things? Okay. Here, Internet of Things, whatever is surrounding us. So far, as far as internet is concerned, we used to think a system, a laptop, a mobile device. This is what so far we thought is having connectivity. Uh, these are all the gadgets could be part of the worldwide network is what we have been thinking so far but in future or it's happening as of now apart from these conventional devices 
maybe your uh, computer, net, uh, laptop or mobile device, a car, a building, yeah, a home appliance, that could have a network chip. That would be part of the network. So that is why in general, it is going to be Internet of Things. In the recent budget, uh, after this BJP government has come, they told that they are going to set up some 100 plus smart cities in India. So what would be a smart city? Basically, what do they mean by, by say, just saying smart city? Wi-Fi connection all over the city. Why? Wi-Fi connection. Fine. Wi-Fi. Why? Why Wi-Fi connection? Having, if you are going to provide a city with Wi-Fi, that, that city will become a smart city. Is it so? Initial step. Initial step. So, what's next? What for they should be providing connectivity? Say for example, the, uh, the college gives you free Wi-Fi. They, they give you free, free uh, mobile devices with uh, no Wi-Fi. So can this campus be called as, uh, I mean, should, be, should this be called as Wi-Fi level campus or a smart camp campus? So what smart campus imply? What does it imply? Here, it is the next yeah, wave, software big data. So this is one of the important uh, concepts. Software cloud computing, big data has coming, and IoT and smart city. So these are all the uh, you know, upcoming areas. Here, by just providing the connectivity, we are part of the network. We have become the member in the Internet of Things. But constantly, I will have to, because you are the member of the network, I have to evaluate you constantly. As long as you are in my network, I have to collect various parameters about you. Where you are, where and all you are making movements. Okay, at what time? So these are the time for time of periods you are in influence of places. Okay. Uh, I will so when it comes to smart city, I have to collect take, take for example, uh, in, a, in a smart city one application is going to be smart power management and smart uh, traffic management. Say for example, that for a particular road, from Monday to Friday, from, from 9 to 10 o'clock, it is going to be congested more. So this is what I have just predicted. So the government should plan an alternative mechanism so that the particular road could be made as toll road. You start collecting toll to use that particular road so that I can reduce traffic flow in that particular road. Finally, I will have to try to set up some alternative road. If we just go by this toll enabled road, we can reach a destination within 10 minutes. Ready to pay toll, use this road and reach a destination within 10 minutes. No, I do not want to use this. I don't want to pay for toll. What I just do is, so this, this is, a, there is an alternative road. You just take this road, but that will take some 40 minutes. So providing you the facilities, okay, like we have got AC buses, normal buses. If you, if you want to escape from the uh, Chennai cities in this hot summer period, what you can do is you can get into the AC bus, pay for minimum for 40 or 50 rupees. You do not want to pay that amount, get into normal bus, pay 5 or 10 rupees, you can just do that. Here, one aspect of the smart city is to provide smart traffic management. So, how I would know that this particular road is heavily loaded or heavily filled with traffic, unless all the vehicles are not part of the internet of things. How, how I would know that from 9 to 10, this particular road is transporting some 10,000 10, vehicles. I, how I will get the 10,000? I cannot put manual resources to count one after another, right? So that is not practically possible. If all the vehicles, nowadays you can, you could listen, if we are going to get any, get any vehicle, in the windshield, there is RFID chip is fixed. You are not supposed to remove it. Whenever the car is delivered from the factory, in the windshield, I hope that the top right of the windshield, there is all of any tag. Okay? So by just reading the tag, all the vehicle related movements will be 
capture it. So that is the kind of technology today we have been living with. Okay, so something similar to that. So in that case, that particular vehicle will become a member of the network. I can constantly predict or constantly monitor where this particular vehicle is heading to. This is one, one uh, aspect of utilizing the Internet of Things, reading the behaviors, predicting the outcomes, and providing you the better facility. Of course, it is the responsibility of the government to utilize the technology to, to serve you better. Okay? Because we have got so many, uh, you know, so, so large number of population, we'll have to, you know, uh, plan our system in an effective manner. The, another example is, uh, recently I heard that uh, one of the particular uh, leading education institute in India, they have used this big data concept to optimize power utilization because that particular institution will be having so many departments, academic block, this hostel block. Say for example, if there is a room where there are no resources, there are no human is available, but still some, uh, you know, uh, fan, light is being operated. Okay, so they will uh, they'll keep on, uh, you know, record all these features. They will provide your advice. Okay, for, the, for so and so period, this, this is your consumption, but whereas the human resources 